Since Night got locked up, I decided to go back to one of my old mains called the Twins, and I actually oh decided God. to P100 them. Oh, one thing that I noticed is that the Twins can be very strong, and I think people are missing out. And since I'm the, uh, like one of the only 5 Twins mains out there, I decided why not make a guide on them. So in this video we're gonna go through everything like add-ons, perks, strats and much more. So let's get straight to it. Alright, so first we're gonna talk about the Twins power very quickly. The Twins can split into two different controllable characters, Charlotte and Victor. Charlotte is just a basic M1 killer, not really that interesting. But Victor on the other hand can be very useful. When unleashed, Victor can run around freely and you will charge a pounce and tap the attack button to release it. Landing a pounce deals damage to a survivor. If the survivor is already injured, they go down. But if they are at full health, Victor clings onto them, causing broken, oblivious and incap... In... okay. And incapacitated on that survivor. And here is some of the things you can do while incap... Yeah, oh fuck. Okay, here's a list of what you can do and what you cannot do. Uh, the survivors that come close to the survivor that is carrying Victor will trigger a killer instinct. So you will know if somebody is close to that survivor. You can switch between Charlotte and Victor freely, but it will be a little delay before you can fully control your character again. If the Victor stays idle, he will also trigger killer instincts on nearby survivors. If you miss a pounce, or if you don't protect Victor while he is standing still, the survivors can kick him, causing him to die. But don't worry, he respawns after a little while, and you can use him again. You can also trap survivors in lockers with Victor, and survivors are not going to be able to escape through the exit gate with Victor on their back. Alright, so that was it for the power. Let's get into the add-ons. The add-ons I recommend using is the speed add-ons, either Madeline Scarf or Forest Dew, and combined with that, the add-ons that make switching between Victor and Charlotte faster, for example Tiny Fingernail. In my opinion, a speed add-on is a must. If you want to play at your best, it's very useful. Being able to run around loops fast to catch the survivor before they get to the pallet is very important. And then I like to use the you know fingernail add-on because being able to unbind faster means that you can start chasing, slugging or whatever you, you want to do much faster. Weighty rattle is uh, also a very good choice because keeping survivor injured is what you want as twins so that's a good one as well. And the rest of the twins add-ons can be pretty good as well. Uh, some are more gimmicky than others but I recommend trying out different ones and have fun with it. Now there's really only one add-on that I definitely recommend you not to use. And surprisingly, it's the add-on that is supposed to help new Twins players. And that is the Cat Figurine add-on. Because it literally blocks your vision and this is more is this? annoying than useful. Don't waste the add-on slots for this add-on, it's just not worth it. It's just much better just learning and, you know, feeling where your promises are gonna go. Alright, moving on to perks. Basically, all the perks that keep survivors injured and prevent healing is gonna be good. Because the more survivors that are injured, the more chance for a good slug to happen and that you will, you know, win. My favorite build is Force Penance, Corrupt, Pain Rest, and Deadman Switch. With this build, you'll have good gen defense paired with Force Penance to keep people injured and if they try to body block or take hits for someone. So this is also a very good build when going against Swifts, trying, you know, to body block uh, for each other. Second build is a more slug oriented build. Uh, don't get me wrong, you usually end up slugging with twins no matter what build you're running. Uh, but this build is specifically made just for slugging. It is uh, Forced Penance, Sloppy Butcher, Corrupt and Thanatophobia. I saw one pump Willy. Uh, doing a twin streak with this build and basically his strategy was just to slug and not hook at all Until you know everybody was on the ground So you know this is a pretty effective build uh, when paired with twins The overall strengths of uh, twins is you know being able to slug people and uh, having a lot of injuries and multitasking And you can also move around loops very fast with Victor And the weaknesses is you know of course playing against healing perks, anti-slug perks, unbreakable uh, boons, you know, stuff like that. And there are certain god palettes and tiles that is very hard for Victor to, you know, mind game on. And of course, survivors can jump into lockers to avoid the twins. And the twins is also very, very buggy. Which can be kind of annoying at times, but you know, it is what it is. Now we're going to get into the real good stuff. The tips and tricks and what to do to be a better twins player. The first thing is to get close to your target before pouncing. Like, I can't stress this enough. I know hitting snipes with Victor is satisfying. The boy! Yes! 
But if you're aiming to win, it's gonna be very risky. The further you are away from the survivor as Victor, the easier it's going to be to dodge him. So one way to always secure hits is to wait a bit before pouncing and to get closer to the survivor. So don't rush the pounce. If you miss, that's a lot of wasted time. You're also gonna want to learn distance for jumping over pallets. It's very useful to just jump over the pallet with Victor and it can catch people off guard and allows you to get some nice hits. If you stand too close, you're just gonna hit the pallet, but if you back up a little, you're gonna fly right over. I suggest you try practice this yourself on a dropped pallet, but it should not be that hard to learn. Next thing is to don't waste time at loops when you don't need to. If you can, just send out Victor at the loop. Because if it's a very weak loop, then sure, you can try to mind game the survivor, but at stronger loops, and if you have Victor available, don't waste your time trying to down the survivor with Charlotte, because Victor will be a lot better in dealing with the loop. There's been so many times where I wasted a lot of time in the match just because I'm like, okay, well I can get this with Charlotte, and then I just end up using Victor anyway. So if you have the chance, use Victor if you can. You can also send out Victor while guarding a hook. Neatly enough, with the anti-camping mechanic, you know exactly where to stand to not let the survivor unhook themselves, and still be relatively close. When you hook a survivor, the prompt for unbinding Victor disappears, because you're too close to the hook. But after a certain distance, I think it's like around 16 meters or something, you can place Victor again. So you can basically just send out Victor to get people off gens and, and such, and be close to the hook, if someone comes to save. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly try to illustrate what I'm trying to say here. So, as you can see by this beautiful painting, I've just hooked a survivor, right? So I'm gonna move 16 meters away from him, which means I can unbind little Victor right here. And what I do then is I run with Victor to another gen, maybe this one, that two people are working on. And I injure one guy, and because one of them gets injured, dead man switch will proc, and it will block the gen. Meaning this guy has to go for the rescue. Or this guy. So basically with this mechanic you're going to be able to force people off gens if they of course don't want to let their teammate die over here. And also yes of course this is not always going to be the case. Maybe you know some survival will be over here hiding waiting to get the sneaky unhook or you know it could be a lot other of other things happening as well. But in most cases I think this tactic works very well. Another thing you're going to want to watch out for is to pounce with Victor on elevated surfaces. Because as you can see, your pounce will not get any distance when you're pouncing towards an object that leans vertically upwards, like stairs or some of the hills in the game. So what you want to do is to pounce from the side of the survivor, that way you won't get stuck on anything and you can pounce like normal. You can use Victor's killer instinct for a lot of things, and you can prevent, for example, pallet saves, get information on survivor's positions, got hex totems and much more. In this clip for example, I got one survivor on the ground and a flashlight nearby that is trying to rescue. While I guard the survivor on the ground, I get a killer instinct from Victor. I quickly switch and get a free injury on the survivor and I'm still able to prevent the survivor on the ground from getting saved. This is just one of the examples of how a useful killer instinct can be, but you get the idea. Take advantage of Victor's killer instinct. Another neat trick is that survivors cannot escape with Victor on their back. So, if you're at gain game and somebody's at the exit gate, if you successfully pounce them and if you stand close with Charlotte, you can get that one more kill because they are not going to be able to escape because the exit gate will be blocked for a few seconds. And the last thing I want to talk about is to don't be afraid to recall Victor. After 30 seconds, if the survivor doesn't get rid of Victor, you can choose to recall Victor from the survivor that got pounced. I do this a lot when I need to build some pressure, and of course it's hard to do that without Victor. So if I know somebody injured is close to me, and Victor is on another survivor, then it might just be more worth to recall and go for the down instead. So recalling can be a bit tricky to know, you know when to do it or not, but for me my mindset is, can I keep generating pressure with Charlotte only? If so, then I can let one survivor just run around with Victor doing nothing. If not, just recall and start building up pressure again. And now I'm going to show you guys a quick game of how some twins gameplay can look like. Uh, but we got sent to Coldwind. I don't know if that's... I mean, I'll rather take uh, Coldwind than uh, Springwood. Not gonna lie. Mm, yeah, man. I'm just gonna go ahead and break this. He's pointing at me. Okay. 
Not sure why. Yes, a pedal right here that we can safely drop. He's gonna keep running, I think. Yeah. There we go. He played that pr actually well, but. Um, this is another flashlight. This could be another, like, flashlight uh, save uh, thing. Yeah. I'm not sure, is there anything, anyone else? Let's see. Nope. Alright, we're shielding. Um, yeah, we have a scorch hook over here. Cool. I'm not too sure. Okay, he's over there with Victor. That's cool. Are gonna drop that? No. Right, well, we get this, this then. Thank you for that. And we get the force penis hit on him. Perfect. Nice. Alright. They got one gen done, but I mean, it's a pretty, pretty good trade for what we've done so far. Nobody's here, okay. Calm, calm. He's gonna drop it here. <coughs> We're gonna break that. Yeah, we got two people here now. Thank you. And then we have the knee as well. She's over here. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, she could have uh, that hard. Luckily, we get the hit before that. Let's go back here. She's trying to get flashlight or whatever. Whoops, that was a mistake from my part. Uh, okay. Yeah, I kind of messed that up there. Get into the rocker, thank you. Yeah, that was a mistake from my part. I uh, missed the pounce there, but um, we should be fine. You know, that happens. Uh, that, uh, that there, I think I maybe got a little bit greedy. Released it earlier. Okay, somebody was here, but they let go of the gem. We block. <laughs> she tried uh, getting into the locker again, but luckily we blocked that. Oh fuck! I try wait, wait. I tried to be. <laughs> I tried to be uh, cool there and jump over the uh, over that obstacle there, but didn't work out. Let's go of Okay, unbreakable. That's fine. Could easily be shilling at this um I mean Um What? That's a Free uh, kill or a hook, okay, thank you. Don't really know what his plan was there, but uh, I'll take it. We 
get our other hook here. That's his first hook. Is this guy gonna trade? No. He is not. Oh, he's gonna jump into a locker, no? Okay, wait. What? Smart move there would maybe be to jump into a locker. Then I would be forced to, you know... Trap her in the locker and I wouldn't get a free hit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not good for them. So that guy is busy with Victor, while this guy is just injured and he's not gonna be able to... Yeah, he's running back to the shack, as you can see. And that's a kill right there. See her running way over here. And that should be GG. And that is it for this video. I hope some of you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want me to post some more content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.